Hi, I'm Jane, the dinosaur expert, so welcome back. I'm going to be talking about Triceratops and the Ceratops family. So, a lot of kindergartners and fifth graders, too, know Triceratops. It's the three-horned dinosaur with the characteristic three horns, three foot horns above the eyes, and the short horn above the brow. But I'm going to go into a little depth on how Triceratops was discovered and how this animal may have been really one of its other relatives. So, Triceratops was first discovered during a time in the Bone Wars when Othniel Marsh and Edward Drinker Cope were competing with each other to find fossils in the western states of North America. And that's when one of Marsh's students found some horns in Wyoming, and he brought them to Marsh, which are these horns, although Marsh didn't know what to make of them yet because he thought the horns belonged to a prehistoric bison. He didn't realize they were from a dinosaur yet, until another student found more skull material in 1888. That's when they realized that Marsh was wrong about his interpretation. He originally named it Bison Altycornus, but now when the skull materials were found, he realized it was from a dinosaur. So he first named it Ceratops Altycornus, and that's when they found the characteristic horns and decided to give it a more proper name. So he called it Triceratops, meaning three-horned face because of the characteristic three horns on the skull. And Altycornus name was dropped because it wasn't formally studied. So there are two species of Triceratops known today, Triceratops horridus and Triceratops porosus. Triceratops porosus has a shorter nose horn than Triceratops horridus. And so, into its life in the late Cretaceous period, towards the very end, Triceratops is one of the last non-avian dinosaurs living in the Hell Creek Formation of Western North America. It munched on low-growing plants with this parrot-like beak at the front. So, it does have teeth. All Ceratopsian dinosaurs have teeth. It's just that this model is covered up with skin though it has shearing teeth in the back. So when Ceratopsians nip low-growing plants, that parrot-like beak grabs them, and then it crosses them into the mouth, where it chews up the food, and then goes into the large gut. And what scientists have been wondering, what were these horns for? When Normally when you see Triceratops, you see it fighting T-Rex, and like stabbing it, although it seems highly unlikely because they found a Triceratops horn that looks like it got snapped off by a T-Rex mouth because T-Rex has a bone-crushing bite and is perfectly capable of biting off these keratinous horns. And if a Triceratops stabbed it, then a T-Rex would fall on it and then wouldn't be able to get back up. So it seems very unlikely that Ceratopsian dinosaurs used their horns for fighting off predators, including some Ceratopsians that had horns that were pretty much useful for fighting, like Aeneasaurus, which lived earlier in North America, the Cretaceous. It has a nose horn that curves downward. That would have been useless as a weapon. And another Ceratopsian called Cosmoceratops from Utah, which has the most horns, it has horns that curve this way, and no sharp horns that curve this way like in other Ceratopsians. So these horns were pretty much used for fighting members of, the own, for, of their, own, their own species, excuse me. So like when male stags use their antlers for fighting members um, for dominance or breeding, right? Ceratopsians likely did the same thing. They have found Triceratops skulls with scrape marks on their frills, which matches others' horns, showing that they interlocked each other. And also, they would have been used for display. Like when male stags use have their big antlers, they make it look very attractive to females, so Ceratopsian dinosaurs likely have those horns for display, too. So those are the more likely reasons what Ceratopsians use their horns for. Display, intimidation, and also breeding rights. And also, we know how Triceratops changed as a group, too. So of course you see the horns point forward, but when Triceratops started out as a baby, it started out with small horns, so the horns were small, and so was the frill, and when they grew up, the horns curved like this way, and then once they become full-grown adults, they pointed forward. So their horns and frills change as they grow up. It's called ontogenetic growth. It's a series of animals evolving from baby into adult. So that's how Triceratops grew up, thanks to evidence with John Scanella and Jack Horner from the Museum of the Rockies. So in the Museum of the Rockies, they have a whole collection of Triceratops skulls from baby to adult. And also with John Scanella, he realized that Taurosaurus, along with Jack Horner, was really a full-grown Triceratops. Taurosaurus has a much bigger frill, 
and it has holes in it. And scientists definitely thought that it was a new species because it looks so different. Although Torosaurus might actually be a full-grown Triceratops because in the Museum of the Rockies collection, they were studying their histology, which is like the bony structure inside the skulls. If it's spongy inside, then it's still growing. But if it's like solid, then it's a full-grown adult. So they cut open all the Triceratops skulls and all of them had bony histology, including their biggest Triceratops skull. Their biggest Triceratops skull also had soft histology in it, which surprised them, and me too. And then when they cut open the Taurosaurus skull, it was very solid inside, so it was done growing, but the, all those other specimens were still growing. That's when John Skidon realized that on the biggest Triceratops frill, the hole is starting to form. So that's when they realized that Taurosaurus might actually be the final growth stage of the Triceratops. So that's when they realized that Taurosaurus really is a full-grown Triceratops. And since Triceratops was named first, it was named two years before Taurosaurus, then it gets to keep the name Triceratops. Some people said that Triceratops should be dropped, but that's never going to happen. And, and the same thing with all Ceratopsians, they all have different types of frills and headgear. So yeah, like Cosmoceratops has 15 horns that curve this way and some horns along the frill. Ineosaurus has a curved down horn. Centrosaurus has a large nose horn and eyelids. And Styracosaurus has a bunch of spikes on the frill and a large nose horn. So all Ceratopsy and Dinosaurs had different head adornments. And they use them for the exact same things. Finding members of the same species, breeding rights, and intimidation. But probably not for fighting off predators. And about Triceratops' family life, we don't have any evidence if it was discovered in big bone beds. There's no big bone beds of Triceratops, only family groups. Like, they found a Triceratops adult with three juveniles together, but no large bone beds like Centrosaurus or Styracosaurus from Alberta, Canada, which contain large individuals from adults to juveniles. But I'm pretty sure the hell creep formation in Western North America still has many secrets to uncover. So, until we do find a Triceratops bone bed, it was probably a solitary animal or just a family animal. So, we still have so much to learn about Triceratops, about the three-horned face. So yeah, it is a pretty magnificent animal, and it lived during the closure of the Mesozoic Era when that large asteroid the size of Mount Everest hit the planet and caused a global catastrophe, killing all the non-avian dinosaurs, except for their modern descendants, the birds. And Triceratops was among one of those animals to see the asteroid hit the ground. So. Hope you enjoyed this video on Ceratopsian dinosaurs, and no other animal will ever have famous headgear as these animals. Thank you.